Hello, this is Alchemist 2, and today I'm going to be reading Tamer of the Nymphs. Ever feel like you're meant for something more? Something extraordinary? Peter Petrelli to Mohinder in Season 4 of Heroes. Chapter 1. Planet Veritas. The Veritas people, a Felid race, always lived a harmonious existence with their ex insect comrades, which were called nymphs. <coughs> nymphs? The nymphs were much larger than the Veritas themselves, which made them perfect modes of transportation for each Veritas inhabitant. These nymphs were responsible for keeping the land plentiful with fruits and vegetables. The people didn't eat meat and had no livestock, but they did have small pets living with them. Everyone had a nymph to ride. By the time one became seven, they could start riding a nymph whenever they needed to, but before, the children and the nymph, or nymphs, depending on the family size, were taken care of by their parents. The Veritas people didn't know violence, nor did they know of divorce or racial conflict. They believed in a higher source. They called Vera, the one truth with many faces, the one that was responsible for all life everywhere. They had a republic, and the leader was known as Vega. She was responsible for keeping the people happy and seeing that they were allotted the things they needed to stay healthy and vibrant. She had never owned a nymph from her childhood and felt like she was missing out on not having to ride and participate in daily pollinating and gathering of the harvest in their seasons, and she felt that it would give her better rapport with her countrymen and women if she did so. Of course, she got along well with them, but many of them saw her as uppity and even holier than thou, sometimes. She had been chosen by the one truth to take upon the duty of ruling them, so she wanted to be she wanted to respect the humility of the god that had given her this ability. Little did she know that her lust for power would turn on her some day. Her closest knight and would be suitor, Amistad, did all he could to convince King Lao that his daughter wanted a nymph. I will be the one to retrieve it for her. I know where the nymphs are born and I can whisper to it. You know this, and I am good at understanding them. In fact, you have told me I was brought here on nymphs' wings, Amistad said. This was true. He had been raised by nymphs, for his mother Palma had died while giving birth to him. This was a rare occasion. Veritas people lived healthy lives as she had died early because of a disease no one knew of and no doctor could cure. However, it didn't destroy Amistad. The healing antennae of the nymphs shielded him and gave him strength. Since then, he could understand their frequency and felt more comfortable being among them than most Veritas people did. Of course, Vaquella and I think this is improper. A duchess shouldn't ride such a beast. It's vulgar, Lao said sternly, adjusting his gla glasses in a pedantic manner. Father, we are an equal people. All that I ask is that I have the chance to be like everyone else and not feared but friends among all, Vega said, sounding wise. Amistad felt his heart leaping out of his chest when Vega turned to face him and smiled at him so gently. She was youthful in appearance, as Veritas people often were, and her silver hair extended to the floor like a waterfall. Her turquoise dress matched her sharp blue tiger eyes. Her felid ears twitched, and she twisted her leopard tail, flirting a bit with the sentrymen. Amistad gulped and giggled as if he were a young girl, and he became embarrassed. He covered his face behind one of the large plume fans of one of his fellow guards. The guard nudged him in the side. Knock it off, Ami, the guard said a bit brusquely. Think about what she says, your grace, Amistad said, hoping to sway the Leonid kid's heart, King's heart. Outside gatherers were riding their nymphs home from their prospective line of work, illuminated against the crystalline moons. She does present a solid argument. Very well, knight. I give you the time. To, I give you the time you need to catch your nymph and bring it to my daughter, Lao said, dismissing him. Before he could leave, the Duchess pulled him aside and hugged him closely. You have no idea how much this means to me, she said effervescently. I think I do, my lady, Amistad answered, blushing hotly after receiving the best gift of all from his lady fair. He hoped that Lao and Quella would choose him out of the century for their daughter's hand, but doing so was not simple. I would have to duel in a battle of wits, at least Amistad's thought. He was a learned Veritas and would win, and his wits would win one day. For now, however, his thoughts were focused on finding the right kind of nymph for Vega. Chapter 2. A Nymph for Vega In the lush forest of Nasser, 
The nymphs would gather every spring to choose to court their mates for the new birth of a new colony. Nymphs could live exceedingly long lives, and their family lives were close. Even the youngsters were chosen for transportation. Ultimately, the baby would know when to return to Nasser and gain wisdom from his parents and grandparents. Among all the newborns, there was one nymph that caught the eye of Amistad. It was a female with iridescent wings, with all the colors of the rainbow in their in intricate fractal patterns. She had multicolored, complex eyes and a golden body, looking much like a jewel of a forest. He named her Jewel because of this and began talking to her. He convinced her that she was going to be a special nymph, but no more special than any nymph before her. Little did Amistad know that Vegas' top appointed scientist, Dr. Cicero Calico, was working on a device called the Crescent, which would allow <laughs> which would allow Vega to control not only Jewel, but every nymph within Veritas. Vega was only creating the Crescent to allow for shorter work days and for shorter work days for the Veritas gatherers and swifter flight times for travelers coming from here to there, amongst many other practical ideas the Brady Duchess had at the time. What she didn't know was the symbiotic relationship between Veritas and Nymph was about to be changed, and the Nymphs wouldn't trust their riders any longer. Once the balance was thrown, the planet would begin to wither and die without the Nymphs to do their pollinating like clockwork. Upon coaxing Jewel back to the castle, Amistad hovered outside of Vega's room at her balcony. Duchess, come see. I have brought you a nymph to ride, he called triumphantly. The Duchess ran quickly to see the nymph Amistad had brought back to her. She is more than I expected. What did you call her, knight? The Duchess inquired. Her name is Jewel. It suits her. It suits the one who will be riding her, Amistad stated, lightly blushing in her presence. Bravely, the Duchess pulled him off Jewel and brought him down into her arms for a tender kiss. Thank you, Knight, she said pleasantly with a grin upon her youthful face. You may call me Amistad from now on, he said, kissing her back. And you can call me Vega, she agreed as they kissed in the moonlight above them. Lit uh, she agreed as they kissed in the moonlight above them, lit their nighttime romance. Momentarily, they stood in each other's embrace, and without saying a word, Amistad took his leave to take Jewel to the Duchess's garden and back. The nymph ate what little she needed and slept in the flower field. From there he bowed gently and went back into the castle to find his quarters and sleep for the night. Chapter 3 Unbridled Chaos Duchess Vega had been speaking about the nymphs to her scientists. Her top scientist, Dr. Calista Cerisa Calico, had been chatting about her latest invention <coughs> called the Crescent, which Vega had given her the preliminary inspiration for. This will be replicated in my lab, if you deem it permissible to. Mind you, the Crescent isn't exactly tested, but it will help gatherers to do their work much quicker, working as a whole. If I mass produce it, work will be easier to perform for the harvesters as well as others with their everyday chores, Cerisa said, demonstrating how the crescent would fit around the nymph's forehead. You know, you know you have my blessing on the crescent. Get a team of the finest scientists together and start manufacturing them. Send a crescent to every writer in Veritas as soon as they are complete, Vega decreed pleasantly. The doctor was ebullient to have pleased the duchess in this way and gathered her best scientists together to start a mass manufacturing to start mass manufacturing her mind control device for the MIPS. In a matter of few hour, few hours, there were enough crescents to circle the globe of Veritas, and all Veritas had one place had one place on their nymph by the end of the night. For about a week, life continued peacefully as it always did, and the nymphs decided they could no longer tolerate being controlled. The relationship they had shared with their writers was fast dissolving. It was a massive upheaval. The nymphs turned against their riders and cocooned them in sticky webs that were impossible to break. The nymphs, had, the nymphs decided to live amongst themselves without the support or help of the Veritas. Some nymphs had no homes to return to and eventually began dying or fighting among themselves. Jewel was the one nymph that hadn't been fitted with a crescent, so she was readily accepting of Vega's commands. <clears throat> Vega was horrified at the chaos she had caused and asked for one nymph whisperer to set everything right again. Amistad, I... <coughs> Amistad, 